One of the most awesome displays of the tremendous energy inside our planet is produced by an active lava flow. Lava flows are produced when magma reaches the surface without fragmenting into pyroclastic material. But how fast it moves, what it looks like, and whether or not you can poke a stick in it, well, that depends on what kind of lava we're talking about. The most familiar types of lava flows have been given the Hawaiian or Polynesian names Pohoihoi and A'a. When low viscosity lava flows relatively slowly, it will form a Pohoihoi type lava flow. These have smooth or hummocky or billowy or ropey type surfaces. But their appearance can vary greatly. That's clear from the many other creative terms that have been used to describe their surfaces, including corded, festooned, filamented, shelly, slabby, coiled, blistered, shark skin, and elephant hide. Pahoyhoy flows commonly advance through lobes and fingers, like the movement of a giant amoeba. The very ends of pahoyhoy flows can even take on some surprising, almost humanoid shapes. When lava is exposed, the surface cools quickly, hardens and deforms brittily, leading to a cracking or popping sound. Just under this brittle surface, though, is a thin layer that deforms plastically and stretches, giving the inflating balloon-type appearance, while inside, the hot lava remains fluid. The common ropey pattern occurs when the thin crust slows or becomes stuck, the lava underneath continues moving forward, folding and wrinkling the crust. Aa flows occur when lava is more viscous or flows faster. Aa flows have surfaces described as rough, blocky, spiny, and rubbly. They advance rather like a bulldozer tread. Rubbly clinker forms and is carried along at the top and then tumbles down the front of the flow where it's overridden. The core of the flow, though, remains molten. As a result, solidified aa flows have clinker at the top and bottom and more homogeneous basalt in the middle. Pahoyhoy flows can turn into aa flows, but never the other way around. When lava erupts underwater, it can form long, rounded fingers and roughly kidney-shaped bodies called pillows, like these on the crest of the submarine volcano Loihi. These pillow basalts formed in central Washington less than 10 million years ago. A lava flow can bury or destroy just about anything in its path. It might be surprising, then, that evidence of something as flammable as a tree can sometimes be left behind. Despite the fact that the lavas on Hawaii are erupted at about 1,000 degrees Celsius, they don't necessarily destroy all signs of life. When a lava flow engulfs a large tree, the tree will be burned up to be sure and maybe even violently. But the lava is quenched or chilled against the tree and that creates what's called a tree mold. This tree mold was formed a few hundred years ago when lavas from Kilauea volcano engulfed some very large acacia koa trees. Sometimes, though, the lava flow will engulf the tree and then drain away again, and that leaves a freestanding cylinder called a lava tree. Basaltic lava is extremely hot. Wood shoved into an active flow is vaporized. The skin on the flow arches upward from the gas generated inside, and incandescent jets of gas blast out of the lava. On the other hand, a sample of lava captured using a simple wire whisk is cold to the touch in only about 15 minutes. In Hawaii, lava typically erupts at the surface high on the slopes of Mauna Loa or Kilauea, often along rift zones. These active vent areas are complex, hot, gaseous, and constantly evolving. Under the influence of gravity, lava flows outward and downhill. Commonly, the lava will form and then flow in underground channels called lava tubes. 
These form when a lava flow develops a crust on all sides that gradually thickens to form a cylindrical tube. Rock is an excellent insulator, so a tube, once formed, can continue to be a conduit for lava for many years. When the level of the lava inside the tube subsides, flow ledges or benches may form, marking the depth of the lava at certain times. Splattering of lava can lead to lava stalactites, like these from Hawaii, similar in appearance to those that form in limestone caves. At the surface, sometimes lava tubes rupture, spilling large quantities of lava at the surface. This is called a breakout, and this one produced turbulence and a heat plume we could feel from 500 feet above the surface. Sometimes the top of an active tube will collapse inward, creating a view of the fast-flowing river of lava underneath. These are called skylights, and even a small one can emit a lot of heat. The lava often eventually drains out of a lava tube, leaving a tunnel-like cave that can extend for miles. Lava tubes form close to the surface, so it's not unusual to see tree roots growing down into the tubes. Where lava enters the ocean, steam plumes are commonly produced. This steam can be very acidic, containing hydrochloric acid and sometimes even tiny fragments of volcanic glass that can be hazardous to the eyes. When the lava flowing through a lava tube reaches the ocean, it can be a surprisingly gentle entry, like what's going on behind me here for the most part. But sometimes the lava reacts with the cold seawater and it fragments and erupts explosively. And of course, a lot of steam is produced as that thousand degree lava hits the cold ocean water. Those fragments are mostly small particles, and so an apron of loose material forms just offshore. Flows may create a lava delta over the top of this weak material, and these can grow to be tens or even hundreds of meters wide. Because they're unstable, a lava delta can subside, forming ocean-facing scarps like these. Lava may flow and drip down these scarps, producing a wide variety of weird shapes. The subsidence forms a down-dropped bench, which can suddenly slump into the ocean, as this time-lapse sequence shows. In mere minutes, the bench disappears beneath the waves as the ocean reclaims this fragile and short-lived piece of land.